Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome back to another Land Development 101 tutorial. Uh, this is the sixth video of the series, and today we're going to be talking about an introduction to walls and fencing. Now, I'm excited for this one because as straightforward and basic as this may seem, there's actually a couple things that you definitely want to look out for and know when you're either when you're putting together a budget or when you're purchasing because if you're not if you're not aware of these things, they could catch you in the end and cost you a lot of money. So with that, let's go ahead and dive in. Now, there are different types of walls and fencing, but uh, the most common types of walls that I'm sure you've seen all over the place and especially around here is CMU walls. Uh, stands for concrete masonry unit just as you can see there in the picture on the right and again like I said they're one of the most common types of walls that we use uh, they come in a few different styles the three most common ones that we use today are precision block split face and slump stone so this is a precision block it, there's nothing aesthetic about it it's very plain and simple number two the split face this one has obviously more texture which gives it a little bit more uh, of an aesthetic appeal which is really nice and number three is the slump stone. Basically, if you can think about it, before the concrete actually cures, the mold is taken out or whatnot, and the concrete kind of slumps a little bit, hence the name slump stone. And here's actually a couple cool pictures that I wanted to show you from uh, one of our jobs. Uh, this is actually all the reinforcement, the rebar that goes inside and reinforces the actual CMU blocks. Okay, before we progress any further, there are a couple of basic wall terms that I want to introduce here. Wall terms as it's specifically related to its location and its reference in the site. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, if you were trying to communicate with somebody, whether it be your subcontractor or someone from the city, and you want to reference... Um, you know this wall right here well how would you distinguish this wall from let's say this wall or this wall from this wall right here so there are a couple terms here that I want you to learn and it will make it a little easier when you're communicating with people and it, nonetheless it also make you sound a little bit more intelligent so the first one very basic it's your perimeter walls these are all the walls surrounding your site that separate your track from all the other areas around it the second one is the side PL walls these are all the sidewalls separating each individual homeowner's property line from one another. And the spine walls. These are similar to the side PL walls, except the spine walls are the rear PL lines separating homes that are back to back. The return walls. These are walls in between the houses that face the street. These walls return off the side PL walls. So learning these wall terms will really help you out, not just in the communicating aspect, but being able to also differentiate and distinguish between the wall types. Um, and that's really important because, for example, uh, a lot of the cities and the counties around here will require that all walls that can be seen from the street will have to be masonry block walls. So that is the perimeter and the return walls. But all the other walls that you can't see from the street, such as the side PL walls or the spine walls, you can get away with installing vinyl, which is a whole lot cheaper. Okay, what we're going to do next actually requires just a little bit of math. Uh, what we're going to do, we're actually going to calculate how many courses of the wall we need in order to fulfill a certain height requirement. So if you take a look at the example right there in front of you, uh, this is just an ordinary typical wall detail you'll find on uh, any plan set. And uh, it's this call out here that you need to pay attention to. It says six foot minimum height from finished grade. And that uh, requirement is usually dictated by the uh, governing jurisdiction, whether it be the city or the county. And that could change. Sometimes it could be a five and a half foot minimum or whatnot. But in this case, we're going to go for a six foot minimum height. So there's our wall right there on the right. And keep in mind, this is for a split face block or a precision block. And the reason being, they have the same dimensions. A slump block stone has a different height. And we'll talk about that later. So we're going to start with the cap. The cap is two inches in this example. Now let's look at each of the courses. Now in the course, each block is eight inches high. So if we have 10 courses times eight inches, you're gonna have 80 inches. But also you have to keep in mind that with the construction of walls, you lose about four inches below the finished grade. So if you take those dimensions and we add them up, you get the two inches from the cap, you got the 80 inches from the courses, and you lose the four inches. So that's 78 inches or six and a half feet. So there you meet the minimum requirement height and you're good to go. Now, if you think, okay, well that's six and a half feet, the minimum requirement was six feet. Keep in mind, if you took a course away, you're taking away eight inches. So if you take eight inches away, you are now gonna be under six, and six feet. So it wouldn't work. So the minimum requirement you need is 10 courses in order to fulfill the six foot high wall. And this is now a slump stone block example. 
Now the slum stone block, the difference is here. It's actually six inches high instead of eight inches high. So what does that mean? Well, you're going to need more courses. So here you have 13 courses. So six inches times 13 uh, courses will get you 78 inches. And again, you lose the four inches below grade. So if you do the math, two inches plus the 78 minus the four, you're left with 76 inches or 6.3 feet. So 13 courses would be your minimum requirement in order to meet that minimum height of six feet. Um, and again, this is very important because if you don't budget this right from the beginning and you go out and you start building walls and you find out that you're short and you need to add a course, you could be tacking on an additional $5 per lineal foot, which could, depending on how big your project could be, it could be hundreds and thousands of dollars. So you definitely don't want to miss that. Okay, another type of wall that I want to mention are retaining walls. Now, they can be used for different reasons, and one of the main reasons being they're used if there's not enough room to meet the minimum setback requirement from the side or back of a house to the toe of slope. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, let's take a look at an example here. So this is the back of a house here, and the city or the county requires that there needs to be a minimum setback of the house of at least 10 feet. Well, if you can take a look, the 10 feet in this example goes way beyond the toe of slope. So what you would do, you would have to install a retaining wall right there so you can meet that minimum setback. So this portion of the slope will be gone, and you can now meet your minimum setback of 10 feet. So if you go back to our example here in this photo, you can see that this is probably exactly what's going on. The houses are going to be built right here, but uh, it's probably not. It probably wasn't going to be able to meet that minimum setback, so that's why the retaining walls were required. Okay, a couple of other different types of walls and fencing that I want to mention is vinyl fencing and tube steel. Uh, vinyl fence, that's what's shown there on the left. And um, we like to use vinyl fencing as much as we can. Not only is it cheaper than block walls, but uh, it still looks good. But again, you have to double check with your, your governing jurisdictions of the area and what the cities or the counties will require. Uh, for instance, I know a couple of cities around here that won't allow any vinyl whatsoever. They'll require all block walls. But there's also other cities or counties that will allow vinyl fencing, but only where it cannot be seen. So again, side PL walls or the spine walls can be allowed, but all the walls facing the street will have to have to be masonry block walls. Tube steel there on the right, uh, you could, you'll you typically see that around basins. Uh, it could also be used for people's rear yards who may have a nice view that want to overlook something. And lastly is the MSE walls, otherwise known as the mechanically stabilized earth walls. And uh, what these are, these are a little bit more complicated and putting together and they're quite a process. We'll go over this in a completely different post. But uh, what they are, they're basically retaining walls just on a, on a much larger scale. Next up, I want to actually show you guys an actual wall and fencing plan set for your reference. So uh, if you look on screen here, this is an example of a wall and fencing plan set for a community. And uh, let's scroll down here. And so if we zoom in here, we can take a look at the actual walls and the fencing. So one thing that you'll notice is that the design or the line that's uh, denoting the side PL walls and the spine walls have this distinct look with the little squares in between, which looks different from the actual return walls, which are just a basically a solid black line. So what does that mean? Well, let's take a look at the construction notes that are calling that out. So we have construction note number two calling out the return walls. And now, let's see, let's find the other one. Oh, here we go, and this is number one. And then we have a number one construction note calling out all the PL walls. So we find the legend, which is over here to the right. If we zoom in here, we can find, we can see what that is. So number one for all the PL walls, so if you remember that, that line with the squares in it, it's calling out to be vinyl fence. And the number two, which was the return walls, a solid black line, that's a, it's calling for a six foot community or return walls, uh, proto two wall system, slump block CMU. So it's going to be slump block, uh, slump block concrete masonry unit. So now that we know that we're going to be using vinyl fence for all the PL walls and we're going to be using a uh, slump stone masonry block wall for the return walls. Um, now you want to actually take a look at the construction notes or the actual details. So for instance, number one, the vinyl fence, it says C detail C on sheet seven, as well as the masonry wall, it says C detail A sheet seven. So let's go to sheet seven. Okay, here we are on sheet seven. So again, we're going to take a look at the vinyl detail as well as the uh, masonry block detail. 
Now, I believe the construction note was calling the vinyl as detail C. That's this one right here. So let's go ahead and zoom in. And what we're going to see, it just basically calls out um, more of the dimensions. It just goes into more detail. It's stuff that you, you obviously want to familiarize yourself with, and especially the subcontractor when they're installing this so they're doing it correctly. Let's go ahead and take a look at the masonry block detail. I believe it was calling for detail A, and this is detail A for the masonry block wall, so we're looking at the right one. First thing you'll notice here is the actual drawing, which is similar to the one I had done and included er uh, earlier as an example when we were calculating the wall height. Now the only difference though is that this is saying six foot max overall. So this is actually s giving it a max height restriction from the finished grade to the top of the wall. So that wall cannot be more than six feet. Um, and that's, uh, I wouldn't say that's the norm. I would say it's more typical that cities and counties and the jurisdictions usually require a minimum height requirement, just like we did earlier. So no more, uh, no less than five and a half feet or no less than six feet. But this one's kind of the opposite. But it's all right, because then you would just have to do your math to figure out how many courses you would need. Let's take a look at this construction note. So this is the cap, eight by two by 16. So that number in the middle is the wall, or I'm sorry, the cap height. So you have a cap of two inches. And also notice down here, it's calling for six inches minimum cover. Unlike our example earlier, where we were losing four inches below finished grade on the wall, here we're actually gonna be losing six inches. So you lose six inches, but you gain two inches in the cap. And again, you would just have to calculate how many courses you would need um, to meet your requirement. Uh, this note here, it's calling out again, six by eight by 16. Eight right there, that's the height. So it's eight inches high, split face CMU block. Um, and of course, there's many other notes and uh, details here. So we won't go through all of it, but this is stuff that you got to remember when you're looking at plans. You want to go through everything and make sure you're, you're checking out the notes and that everything's correct. And that uh, when you get to the building, that obviously the subcontractors or whoever you're having is installing per the plans. All right. And the very last thing we're going to look at here is another plan set to look at retaining walls. Now, real quick, I don't want to confuse you or bombard you with so much additional information and extra plans, but I do want to make a point here that the retaining walls, they're usually shown on a separate plan set from the regular walls. And now why is that? Well, the retaining walls are usually more of a structural issue or structural concern. So they're usually put on a plan set designed and drawn by your civil engineer. Now that could be either your precise grading plans, it could even be rough grading plans, um, or both, or it could be its own separate retaining wall plan set. But again, it's gonna be on plans usually designed by your civil engineer. On the other hand, all the other walls typically pertain more to the design and, and the aesthetics of the community and how it looks. So in that case, it's usually put on a plan set drawn by your landscape architect. So let's scroll through here and find an example of a retaining wall. Here's one right here in the rear yard of lot 15. So this, this right here, this line, that is a retaining wall. And that's pretty typical. Retaining walls have this checkered fill design on the plans. And that's how you'll know if it's a retaining wall. And just like we mentioned earlier, this lot probably has a retaining wall because if you look, here's the toe of slope at this dash line right there. And so it probably does not meet the minimum setback from the back of the house to the toe of slope hence the retaining wall. Um, also, if you remember from the rough grading video, this denotes that this is the top of a slope and it, and it goes down from there. So if you can imagine, here's the rear of the house, you have a slope on top and it drops and it falls, but then you got a retaining wall that stops it and catches the grade. Thus, these people here can have the minimum setback and enough room in the back of the house. Okay, that's your introduction to walls and fencing. Of course, there's a lot more to come and a lot more to uh, cover, but that'll get you through the basics and get your feet wet. Uh, like I mentioned earlier on in the video, even though walls and fencing may seem pretty easy and straightforward and basic, which it is, but if you're not careful, there are a couple of those things that if you don't know and if you don't prepare ahead of time, it could wind up coming back around and biting you in the butt and costing you lots and lots of money. So I hope you enjoy that. If you have any questions or comments or requests whatsoever, please leave it below. Reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and you hit that like button because we have plenty more coming. Talk to you next time.